This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Honey. This week uh, really kicked off with a bit of good news and bad news, perfectly balanced. Uh, but let's start with arguably the biggest story of the week so far, which contains a, a bit of both, depending on whether or not you're a Game Pass subscriber, or if you're justifiably worried about even more tech and entertainment monopolies harming the overall landscape, as well as shrinking the overall job pool in that sector, because any time an announcement like this happens, it's always followed by big layoffs. We've found a few redundancies. Yeah, uh, in an absolutely massive, all-cash deal, Microsoft has agreed to purchase the monstrous, yet recently tarnished gaming publisher Activision Blizzard for nearly $70 billion. It's funny, we just thought right now would be, uh, you know, no reason, just felt like, felt like, might as well. Uh, you know, now that your stock is fucking worth half of what it was last year. This is like kind of a thing that Microsoft seems to do. Like you can always, when, it, when a company is now uh, it, like enveloped in scandal or performing badly, yeah. you kind of you get this like lurking feeling that Microsoft's right on the corner. Like it happened with, with Minecraft and now Notch just sits up in a billion dollar mansion shit posting all day. And then it happened to uh, Bethesda, which like ruined all of its credibility in the industry, but was still like, hey, don't worry. We still got Elder Scrolls coming. But the damage had been done, and Microsoft's like, <laughs> sorry, Todd, this is our company now. And then Activision gets embroiled in scandal, and <laughs> who comes knocking? Big Daddy Microsoft. Oh, looks like looks like you're having a little trouble. It's Clippy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having trouble with your Would business? you like to cash out and just fuck off? <laughs> who wants a golden parachute? Anyway, yeah. yeah, something of this nature almost seemed like an inevitability in the wake of that sexual abuse and wage discrepancy scandal over it. Activision Blizzard mm -hmm. and the subsequent lawsuits. And uh, yeah, it's all done immense harm to the brand. But apparently not irreparable harm because Microsoft, they're like, we can re we can repair this. Under new management. <laughs> Come back in. Yeah. Oh, how Activision Blizzard misses the days where their biggest problem was public reception to the announcement of a Diablo game for mobile devices. Mm -hmm. You all got phones. Yeah. Though once you're sued by the state of California itself over claims of harassment and discrimination, you'd have to wonder if there would be any way possible to rebuild the company's reputation. But cleaning house followed by a complete corporate takeover just might do the trick. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened as news broke early Monday before the acquisition announcement that the company fired almost 40 employees related to the scandal that broke last summer. Okay, mm -hmm. hey, there's, that's good. Yeah. Why were they still there? Uh, so a spokeswoman for Activision Blizzard, Helene Klasky, confirmed to Eurogamer that 37 people have exited, exited the company and a further 44 have been disciplined as part of the company's investigation. So these headlines were short-lived as the announcement that Microsoft would be acquiring Activision Blizzard for $70 billion quickly dominated the news cycle. Uh, here's more on the deal from the New York Times. The blockbuster acquisition announced on Tuesday would catapult the company into a leading spot in the $175 billion gaming industry. Microsoft framed the deal as strengthening the company's hand in the so-called metaverse, mm -hmm. the nascent mm -hmm. world of virtual and augmented reality. Ugh. The metaverse has attracted huge amounts of investment and talent, though so far is more of a buzzword than a thriving mm -hmm. business. But the focus on the futuristic metaverse belies the significance of the deal in the present. The acquisition helps Microsoft gain on its rival Sony in the long-running battle for gamers' attentions and wallets by offering top titles. Phil Spencer, the chief executive of Microsoft's gaming business, said that whatever the metaverse may end up being, quote, gaming will be at the forefront of making that mainstream. For now, he said, the acquisition was about gaining a stronghold in mobile gaming where Microsoft barely competes and a studio that produces hugely popular games. He called Call of Duty one of the amazing entertainment franchises on the planet. Yes, yeah, so because it, it's King is the one that's owned by Activision. That's the thing here is uh, the headlines are all Activision Blizzard. Uh, King is a part of that. And believe it or not, lots of people still play Candy Crush and those various games. And so this does open... Microsoft uh, to another uh, segment of the, yeah. the income. Diversified. Although, yeah, M Minecraft, another acquisition, uh, pretty big on mobile. Can finally play, play Candy Crush with RTX on. <laughs> it's going to blow oh your fucking God. mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, the article goes on to talk about the obvious elephant in the room. Uh, whether or not this acquisition will make it past federal regulators, noting that both Democrats and Republicans have been trying to mm, limit the overall power of these huge tech companies. There's been a lot of big mergers and acquisitions over the last few years. And um, I mean, I guess they've gone great for the executives and shareholders, but 
Not so great Not for everyone so else. Not so great for pretty much everyone else, yeah. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how this one, like, look, a lot of things are the same, baby. But uh, a lot of those huge uh, mergers were in the Trump era where, yeah. you know, you, you give daddy a little taste or do something and uh, you get a, get this pushed through. Whereas this... This will be Biden's fault. Yeah. I mean, we already went from like six major Hollywood studios to four yeah. in like the past five years. And yeah. it's been bad unless you're like, like a lot of people are like, well, now Marvel, uh, Disney has the X-Men. It's like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Everything else about this deal fucking sucks. The, 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 like, so the consumer who has no awareness. Consumer of, with two O's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is really benefiting from yeah. this. Yeah. At least yeah. in the short term, because... Again, as we saw with Netflix earlier this week, this week uh, prices will rise, and they will mm -hmm. continue to always rise. Yeah. Um, yep. So at, get your Game Pass wallets. <laughs> look at that stock ticker. Yeah. Or you, you could be mimicking the Joe Biden sticker on the gas pumps. Yeah. I did that. <laughs> They're going to put that on the Game Pass. That's me, Jack. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, it's likely that this deal will go through with minimal pushback, because even as big as it is, it still only puts Microsoft, apparently, in third place overall in the space behind Sony and Tencent. Even with this deal. And that's also still followed closely by Nintendo. Hardly the monopoly that would unnerve lawmakers, but one that should raise concerns for the industry and consumers who should understand that these deals always result in massive amounts of layoffs as things are consolidated. Yeah. Uh, one layoff that wouldn't hurt anyone's feelings, though, would be the firing of CEO Bobby Kotick. And while initial reports and an official statement from Microsoft seem to indicate that he wouldn't be stepping down from his position, what, what are you We're doing? We're keeping Bobby around. Despite that, the actual plan of action is for Kotick to step down as CEO when the acquisition is actually completed in 2023. Mm -hmm. So let him leave with his dignity, I guess. What, who, who, does this man just have like a file full of blackmail on everyone? I mean, How maybe. does he still have his fucking job? It's insane. Well, he did just make a huge deal with Microsoft. I guess. He got the goods. Yeah. So, yeah, not the dishonorable discharge that many would have hoped for, but he'll be gone either way, and yeah. he'll have just a giant vault full of gold coins to swim around in while he looks for his next job. In the Hollywood Hills with an internet connection that only goes to Twitter where he can shitpost about yeah. how slighted he is. Yeah. Cancel culture run amok. <laughs> they canceled me, and all I got was this billion-dollar was... golden parachute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that leaves Microsoft and Phil Spencer to pick up the pieces and rebuild the brand. Uh, here's Insider. We believe it's critical for Activision Blizzard to drive forward on its renewed cultural commitments. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said, We are supportive of the goals and the work Activision Blizzard is doing. And we also recognize that after the close, we will have significant work to do in order to continue to build a culture where everyone can do their best work. Now, again, as far as... Consumer's concerned. Consumer. <laughs> you, you, the humble gamer, you don't have to worry too much about it uh, because it would be outrageously stupid for Microsoft to restrict PlayStation users from playing titles like Call of Duty. And by the way, Blizzard, we all know this. It's all, it's mostly PC anyway, so can't see how that would change too much. But if you've got an Xbox or a PC, and more specifically, Game Pass, uh, this acquisition is almost certainly going to be a huge improvement for you because all of the most popular franchises under that Activision Blizzard umbrella are going to be coming to Xbox's paid subscription service. And you will most likely see every new Call of Duty release included in Game Pass on day one, which is just like Halo. Like, hey, you don't have to spend $60. It's right here. It's included. As a consumer, I'm excited to have one less launcher in my system tray to sort through. Yeah, I guess it'll all go to the Xbox Too many launcher. launchers now. Yeah. Life used to be simple. You click on Steam, you play a video game. Now I gotta fucking remember which of the 10 storefronts I bought the fucking thing on. You know what gamers hate? More launchers. We should reduce the amount of launchers by buying up all of the companies. Yeah, thanks, Microsoft. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's, it's undeniable that this is a good thing for members of the Xbox subscription service, yeah. which they've been pushing extremely hard, and it's great. Yeah, I love it. I'm like, what's the catch? <laughs> When's the other shoe going to drop? Well, I, How I, are you even making money on this? I can almost certainly tell you that the prices will be going up. It's currently... It what? has to. It's 10 bucks for Xbox, and you get to... It, it's like, just Halo alone is six months of the service. Yeah. And if you want it on Xbox and PC, it's 15 bucks a month. And I even like uh, tested it out on my phone with the cloud service. Unbelievable. Damn. So the price is... I would assume would have to go up eventually, but like, yeah, this is this is also great for 
uh, I, someone like me who over the years, I know I'm, I'm really into Vanguard right now, but like for years I didn't even try playing the latest Call of Duty because I was like, I'm not going to pay for this. I know that I don't like it and I haven't liked it for a while. And this is like an immediate shot into the arm of people who may not have paid full price for it, but would play it on something like Game Pass. Yeah. Plus, Warzone's going to be on Game Pass now, in theory. Yeah. And it's a massive game. Hell yeah. So, and yeah. it's on mobile. It's great for the consumer. Not so great for the industry. Or and the, the people, people working, working in it. it. Yes. And it's it's very good for Bobby Kotick. Who is just going to go rip-roaring on the best vacation ever, hopefully, and doesn't touch another company ever. Yeah. 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 He's just going to go exploit low-wage earners in other countries as he vacations. Yeah. Sorry, I just watched White Lotus, so it's still on my oh, mind. Oh, right. Yeah. That's America, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess you're. I guess you're right. Yeah. We have Hawaii. Col- the colonialism is calling from <laughs> inside the house. <laughs> True. Anyway, uh, this also forces us to hear about the fucking metaverse even more than we already were, because that's apparently the big play here. Got to corner the metaverse market, the market that doesn't exist, but it will, and it's gonna be a big deal, everyone. We promise. We swear. You're gonna be doing all the things you do now in real life, in the metaverse, for some reason. That's what everyone's going to be doing. At least that's I what the know. loudest people online say. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, since we're on the topic of companies gearing up for their big debut and what appears to be our inevitable future in virtual reality, we should probably bring up Walmart's plans for their entry into the space because according to CNBC, Walmart is quietly preparing to enter the metaverse. Why? What it... <sighs> this is what Sam Walton wanted. Uh, so it, in this recent article, they go over some trademark filings which cast a wide net regarding the supermarket's plans in the virtual space. And yes, it includes NFTs, non-fungible tokens. We're sorry. Stick with us. Everyone's making fun of this. Don't worry. People hate the Walmart idea and it's dumb. We all think it's stupid. stupid. It's just it's buzzwords for their investors. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, here's here's more about the Walmart metaverse from that article. The big box retailer filed several new trademarks late last month that indicate its intent to make and sell virtual goods, including electronics, home decorations, toys, sporting goods, and personal care products. But you sell real versions of the, all those things. <laughs> I can't wait to use my personal care products inside the metaverse. Can I buy a virtual gun like, at a, like I can at a real Walmart? Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, also, if you don't buy the personal care products from the Walmart vet Metaverse store, you're going to have stink lines coming yeah, off your character. Your avatar looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, you live like this? Anyways, well, in a separate filing, Walmart said it would offer users a virtual currency as well as NFTs. Are they going to make old people put on uh, VR goggles and like greet people at the entrance to the Metaverse? Hello, welcome. My pleasure. I'm getting sick. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to work. I think I'm going to puke. I am only doing this to have some kind of social interaction during the day. Uh, Anyways, they include screenshots of the filings, which indicate uh, the company's intent to offer online retail store services featuring virtual merchandise. Uh, Then they go on to list pretty much everything that they sell in their actual retail stores, saying that they will offer them in the virtual stores as well. Sounds like a lot of fun, Elliot. I can't wait to go and get tire cleaner down at the virtual Walmart. But uh, why the fuck would anyone want to shop in a virtual Walmart for virtual goods? We assume that it's to fill out your virtual apartment that you bought with Dogecoin or something, but why go through the actual shopping experience at all? Like, just point and click it. I don't get it. Maybe I'm getting old, but I don't understand the appeal of being like, well, time to go down, like drive my virtual car all the way to the virtual Walmart and walk the aisles. Can you imagine if fucking... Go on, you go on like Amazon.com, you know exactly what you want, but you have to like wheel your fake shopping cart down millions of aisles to find. I, it's well, like the, the point. It was the, the, I know what I want. I'm going to type it in. <laughs> I'm going to click on it. I'm going to put it in the cart. I'm going to buy it. It's like the uh, online shopping equivalent of like uh, the uh, the news articles that are just slideshows. Like, I, I just, can you put it all in one thing? I don't want to have to walk by and see things. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. But luckily, we don't have to wonder what that would be like. Because there's actually a video that's been floating around that gives us a glimpse at what this would look like. The video has been inaccurately attributed to these latest filings by Walmart, but it was actually commissioned by Walmart to show off what a virtual shopping experience would look like. And uh, it's it's just, it's a few years old. It was made for the tech portion of South by Southwest Festival a few years back. But uh-huh. it's this is what Walmart thinks <laughs> is the future of shopping. Yeah. It gives us the best example of our very, very bleak future of trudging through the virtual aisles of the metaverse Walmart while a 20-foot-tall waifu runs around kicking over displays. Yeah, and then there's a bunch of those uh, 
Ugandan knuckles. Yeah. Kicking your Do shin. you know they like? Yeah. Um, so, it's yeah. fun. This video, which I guess it was attached to the Metaverse uh, news uh, that went out. Yeah, it was like uh, then, Walmart's doing this, and then Twitter users were like, yeah, this, oh, they also did this. This so. is Walmart's Metaverse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was rightfully mocked by pretty much everyone, because it's just like, what's the point? What Are, are they buying real goods? Like, like it was, it's just very confusing. I'm like, what is the person actually doing? Like, are they shopping for real goods or are they shopping for virtual goods? Because if it's real goods, there's a lot of weird things about it. Yeah, that, that would like, be like, you we'll know, put this in your car. Like, wait, my my real car, my virtual car. Am I in Am I in a Walmart store? Like I show up at the store and they put a goggles on me and I navigate virtual aisles instead of navigating the I would real assume aisles. That the actual real life practical purpose would be that you shop virtually and the goods are delivered physically in the real world. I, yeah, that would make but more then it's, sense. But then it's like, but at the website. Yeah. I'll just go on the website. I know what I want. Yeah. Just show me a list of like all your TVs. I don't want to It's the to... same thing we keep saying is like they're it's a solution in search of a problem. Yeah. They're doing extra steps for who no fucking for reason. The people who would enjoy this are like the people that have like earnest conversations with those uh uh, holograms at the airport that are just like female shaped bodies with yeah. projections on them yeah. or like the the robot that checks you into a restaurant that they have in Japan yeah like oh hello man. hello there Mr. Robot anyway I don't get it and neither do a lot of people it was very baffling here's some of the best reactions that we saw to it though what is the advantage compared to the current supermarket website experience you can't tell shareholders that you've already made e-commerce as good as it's going to get you have to pretend that there's new possibilities for growth out there on the metaverse crypto blockchain. Think of how Twitter introduces new features nobody wants every year. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. They took the worst part of shopping and added lag. <laughs> there, there has already been a mass shooting at the metaverse Walmart. Ooh, yeah. And uh, our personal favorite. Imagine you're at the Metaverse Walmart and this stupid motherfucker starts going off. <laughs> yodeling, yodeling, yeah, yodeling, uh, yodeling. A photo of that, that child who got famous for yodeling some Hank Williams songs in a Walmart. But then he made a, a very short-lived career out of it. He joined Lil Nas X. Uh, if you ain't like... gonna get it up, then get it out my way. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, one thing that will not be fixed by the Metaverse is scalping. Mm-hmm. The entire point of NFTs right now is attempting to buy up a bunch of garbage to resell at a higher price point because of scarcity. It's a good grift. Yeah. That's, uh, everyone's just drop shipping. <laughs> Virtually drop shipping. The future is just everyone drop shipping each other goods. What if we did StockX, but there was no actual physical goods? Yeah. Why, that'd be, no one would fall for that. Save us a lot of money on, like, inventory and yeah. shit. But anyway, let, let's switch back to the real world now and uh, it's real scalping problems because a recent interview from Sky News brings us into the headspace of a scalper and someone who helps other people scalp for a price, of course. Yeah. Uh, Jack Bayless, who owns a company called Aftermarket Arbitrage in the UK, spoke with the outlet about his business, which started out reselling sneakers and then moved on to a software subscription service that alerts other would-be scalpers to the replenishment of highly sought after goods like the PlayStation 5, which no one still can get. Where's my came PlayStation out, 5? Came out over a year ago? This is insane. They're going to do a PlayStation 5 Slim before everyone gets their hands on the first one. Anyway, in this guy's words, Bayless thinks that on some level, he's a good guy who's doing good things because he's creating a generation of young entrepreneurs. Fuck off. <laughs> young entrepreneurs and not further stressing the already crippled global supply chain for profit. You are. You're adding links in the chain that don't need to fucking be there. Every bad story in the future is just... Adding steps to things that don't need those steps. This is like like all those like people, on, all the the millennial and Gen Z finance bros on TikTok, all all just literal sociopaths. Just like <laughs> yeah. here's here's a life hack. Like they're just life hacks, like stealing people's homes legally and it's, shit like that. It's like things, and I'm oversimplifying by saying this, but it's like things were too simple. Like uh, like. Everything had just gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, you go on Amazon, you get a book the next day or whatever. And now in order to create more things to do, everyone's like, what if we made the process far more complicated? Yeah. I mean, we saw this already. I mean, no one needs PlayStation 5. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, people needed toilet paper and hand yes. sanitizer and masks and yeah. shit. And uh, yeah, a bunch of entrepreneurs uh, <laughs> went ahead and just made that. Way harder for everyone yes. by uh, hoarding all of it. Yeah, this is just the best example because this is an ongoing problem. Yeah. So anyway, here's some quotes from this 
interview. Aftermarket arbitrage's posts on Instagram show boxes of the latest PS5 and Xbox consoles, as well as Adidas Yeezy sneakers and other consumer goods stacked from the floor to the ceiling. Quote, we basically just adapt when we see a shortage in like a supply chain, a supply and demand issue. We can then capitalize on that. Quote, look at every single step in the supply chain. Someone is adding value somewhere. It's not being sold at cost price. It's capitalism. Well, you're right about that. <laughs> regarding <You're> damn right. <laughs> regarding whether or not he feels any guilt for his role in taking a console away from a, a child or an adult or a family who actually wants to play some video games, he said, yeah, sure. But also, I get to see the flip side of the coin, the area that the media and the general public who hate us, quote, scalpers don't see, he said. To me, owning the PS5 or an Xbox isn't a necessity. It's a luxury, okay? If you can afford to spend 450 pounds, spending the extra 100 pounds should be pretty marginal. If you've got cash ready to splash on that. Yes, some families are gonna have to pay another 100 pounds, but what you don't think about is our members. They've got 30 consoles. They're making 100 pounds on each one. And then they're making a good month's salary in a couple of days. These people are fucking parasites. Why won't anyone think of the scalpers? I am, I am the tapeworm in the rectum of capitalism. <laughs> Why does everyone hate me? Yeah. So yeah, the majority of the people who subscribe to Aftermarket, Mar and I, and I, this fucking company's alerts are very young, according to Mr. Bayless, uh, adding that he thought they were showing a lot of initiative. They got moxie. <laughs> Quote, what they're doing is they're being entrepreneurs. They're going out, creating a side income, and they're doing something that 90% of the population can't be bothered to do, said Mr. Bayless. <laughs> he said some of the company's older members have been able to quit their jobs and escape their debts due to reselling consoles and other goods on a full-time basis. Quote, they spend more time with the family, with their kids. We've had people who've been able to renovate their house. They bought the kids a climbing frame. They bought the wives new cars. They bought themselves new cars. We've then had one of our members. He was 20,000 pounds in gambling debt, and we've took him on. He's been with us for a year. He's now in the clear, and he's made, I think he's made a significant amount of money. So he, there you go. This man's creating jobs. And uh, if you have a problem with this, well, you have a problem with Job creator. <laughs> yeah. You have a problem with capitalism. Mm -hmm. And you, how, if you have a problem with capitalism, that means you're a dirty leftist. And, uh, get out. If you don't like it, leave it. Get in the helicopter, kid. Uh huh. All right. Now we do have some of that good news for you in a second. But before we move on, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, Honey. We've all, we all shop online and we've all seen that promo code field taunting us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and it applies the best one that it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. Then you go to checkout. The Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site, and if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Yeah, I, I say this every time, but I saved several hundred dollars on a new gaming PC uh, by using a Honey coupon. It was it completely uh, invalidated all the global supply chain issues that had jacked up the price in the first place. Don't you feel so, bad about that arbitrage guy now, though? No, exactly. not at all. And I got a new pickleball paddle, so yeah, take that. Yeah, you did. Honey saved us over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and it stalls in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. We would never recommend something that we don't use, so get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash itdaily. That is joinhoney.com slash itdaily. All right, back into the news with some updates regarding the Olympics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Wait, the Olympics. We, hold on, we just had an Olympics. The Olympics what are you are, talking about? They're back, baby, because God hates us all. And these Olympic Games, like all Olympic Games, are not without their controversy, especially while the entire world is still grappling with the pandemic. Why not have another Olympics? Let's do it again. Uh, and also because they're being held in Beijing, China, where a local tennis star uh, recently went missing for a while after accusing a vice premier of sexually assaulting her. Where did she go? Where could she why, possibly... Why don't you respect the woman's privacy, buddy? Uh, yes, yeah, she has uh, since appeared via a video call saying that she's okay, just chilling at home. I can't really leave, but I'm here at home. Anyways, we're not focusing on uh, the bad Olympic stuff today. We're focusing on the fun because, folks, everybody loves a reboot, and it is official. The Jamaican bobsled team has qualified for the 2022 Winter Olympics. Hell yeah. With their four-man team having qualified for the first time in over 20 years. Hey, it's the 90s. It's happening again. Love the reboot. Yeah. Yeah. I wish John Candy was around for this. He would have loved to have seen this. 
uh, from the team's official Twitter account, and I'm not going to do the voice. <laughs> He's not, this is not Chet Hanks. I'm not going to do it. No. Breaking. Jamaica, we have a bobsled team heading to Beijing. It will be fire on ice as Team Jamaica secured their spot at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. This will be the first time JAM has qualified in three Olympic bobsled events. Four-man, two-man, and women's monobob. Mm. Now, if this sounds ridiculous because Jamaica is an island in the Caribbean with a tropical climate and doesn't really have like the natural capability to host winter sports at all, that's because it is. It's very odd. So odd, in fact, that there was a movie about this very feat made back in the 1990s starring John Candy called Cool Runnings that told the story of the first Jamaican bobsled team to qualify for the Winter Olympics. It's a heartwarming tale, and everybody loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, every kid in the entire world saw that movie if you were in the perfect median age range. Yeah. But it's, it's not that strange because, you know, travel exists. People from warm climates can train for winter sports elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, while it has been two decades since a four-man bobsled team from Jamaica has qualified, they have competed in the two-man more than a few times over the years. Either way, it's a Disney movie that our entire generation saw when we were kids. So that's who we're cheering for this yes. year. Yes. Go Jamaican bobsled team. Yeah. Chet Hanks is going to be there just stoked giving them the award. Yeah. 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 How's he doing? I wonder how he's doing. Ah! Uh, the last I saw of him, he was interviewed by Channel 5. Yeah. And he apparently was not happy about how he was portrayed <laughs> in that interview. Oh, you think? Wow, I come off looking like a real asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here's some more good news that was born from the ultimate bad news recently. You can now order a few COVID-19 home test kits and have them shipped right to your door completely free. A few. Home tests. Yeah. Right to your door. Just just in the nick of time. Right in the nick of time. Yeah. Right right before a bunch of people are going to be seeing a lot of other people on a lot of consecutive weekends and weeks uh, mm -hmm. traveling. You know, a time when you'd really want to know as quickly as possible whether you are positive for this COVID virus so you can avoid uh, spreading it further. Yeah, exactly. Uh, January. And, and and no one could have seen that coming. January, the busiest month for of travel. the year for, uh, for social gatherings. Yeah. That's the joke. Yes, it, uh, it's terrible timing. We obviously should have been getting COVID tests automatically shipped to us alongside proper masks for quite a while now. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. better late than never, I guess. And with how long it could take for these things to get to your door, hell, we might actually be on the other side of this spike. Sorry, uh, we're trying to stay positive about this. The good news is that uh, the sites uh, for the free tests, they were actually launched a day early. So uh, everyone got in, got as many as they could, and now you can buy them on Depop for $400. We're doing a service here. <laughs> I'm providing a vital service. Oh no, that's a joke. God. You can apparently still get them for, for free. I, I got some. Did you get any? Uh, from the government? Yeah. Already? I signed up oh, for Oh, yeah, it. we signed up. I was like, you got them already? No. No, no, I haven't gotten them. No. Anyways, uh, here's the info from CNN and how you can get yours. The federal government has quietly launched its website to sign up for free COVID-19 tests, allowing people to order a maximum of four tests shipped directly to their household. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki confirmed Tuesday that the government website to order free COVID-19 tests is up and running as part of a beta phase ahead of the government website's formal rollout Wednesday morning. Quote, COVIDtest.gov is in the beta phase right now, which is a standard part of the process, typically as it's being kind of tested in the early stages of being rolled out, Psaki told reporters at the White House. It will officially launch tomorrow morning. Given the formal launch wasn't expected until Wednesday, a White House official said this is only the beta phase to ensure the site works seamlessly. We don't want to have a repeat of that Obama website. Yeah. That would have made us look bad, and Fox News would have said naughty things to us. Yeah. Anyways, uh, if you've got insurance, they'll cover the cost of eight tests per month. If order no from insurance? The... Well, I guess, you, uh, I guess you're fucked. Yeah, if you're uninsured, you can order uh, four per household, apparently. Apparently just for the address. I was like, oh, well, yeah, just get your uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, yeah. or, or your roommate or your kids to put their own information in and just, just get some more shipped. Because if you do have a big family living in one household, you'd probably want more than four tests for an entire month. Yeah, I'm but not 100% apparently... clear on this, but yeah, from what I've seen, it's done by, like, address, by household. So, um, yeah, if you live with, if you live alone, hey, that's four tests for you. If you live with, like, eight other people, well... Ration those tests. Yeah. Now, the one hope is that these at-home tests will take some of the strain off of the in-person sites. Uh, we also hope that, uh, once again, we are nearing the backside of the Omicron outbreak. Um, that, that website, the COVID test website, will also show you uh, 
where you can get free in-person tests. It's so infuriating because Jen Psaki, who's just so... She sucks. She, like, literally right before Christmas, someone at the White House press briefing was like, hey, why doesn't Joe Biden just send uh, rapid tests to everyone in America? And she's like, oh, why doesn't Joe Biden send rapid tests to anyone in America? Oh, you just want more free shit? You losers, you think we're going to help you? No, we're Fuck not doing you. shit anymore. And then like three weeks later, he's like, shit, that was a really good idea. <laughs> we should probably do that. Well, we can't have it in time for Christmas, so uh, January it is. Why not mid-January? Yeah. Uh, to be delivered, uh, uh, I don't know, February. Yeah. This would be good for Valentine's Day. This should have been happening for the last year. They, yeah, for sure. Like they With N95 or KN95 masks shipped. Like There was a lot of talk during Trump's COVID year of using the Defense Production Act to manufacture, uh, you know, COVID drugs and stuff like that. And why has there been no, dis maybe I just missed it, but why has there been no fucking discussion of using the Defense Production Act to manufacture as many tests as possible and send them to as many people as need them? Like, hey. this, it's, we're fucking two years into this shit. Shut up, Jack. God damn it. Uh, got hairy legs. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we might, might be on, or inching towards, the end of the Omicron. We don't know what's coming after that mm. uh, outbreak. Uh, it, it and the Phi Pi. The, the data is, of course, coming from the best source possible. Your local municipalities poo poo. It's looking promising. We've covered wastewater analysis of COVID previously, but the short version is that finding COVID in wastewater has aligned pretty consistently with previous spikes in positive tests and has almost become uh, predictive of a spike because not everyone gets tested, but everyone takes a shit. Yeah. So they see a spike in that, and they're like, there was, people were sounding alarm bells in like late November, early December, like something's going on with the shit water. The shit is full of COVID. Yeah. This dookie is glowing. But don't send any tests. No. Just in case. Oh, you think the government owes you a test? <laughs> in December, wastewater epidemiologists saw a large spike in COVID before the spike in testing and positive tests. Now it's looking like they've seen a sharp decline. Here's more from New York Magazine. Dr. Mariana Matis, the co-founder of the first company to detect the coronavirus in wastewater, Biobot Analytics in Cambridge, Massachusetts, explains how the process works. Clients such as the state of Massachusetts and Miami-Dade County take regular samples from their treatment plants and overnight them to the company's lab, which runs a PCR test to determine the level of the virus in the water and does genetic sequencing to determine which variant is prevalent. With COVID ICU admissions threatening the all-time record and the daily average of deaths pushing 2,000, such an extreme surge may soon rid Omicron of its reputation as the less dangerous variant at the population level. But there appears to be some good news from the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> the turtles are back. <laughs> the 90s, another reboot. Pizza's on the way. Uh, while Mattis says COVID in the wastewater is at a record high, the levels are sharply declining in Boston, where the company launched, and the cases have only just peaked. After a confounding winter, there's a light at the end of the sewer pipe. I love that this is how they can accurately measure with no other, like, because there's a bunch of people that just won't get tested or whatever, and it's like, this is a clear indication. Can't lie yeah. about these results. Sewers, so you can also, you can detect, like, uh, alcoholism levels, uh, drug abuse levels. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty wild. Just don't take a sample of that uh, the river in Chicago during St. Patrick's Day. No. God, I can't test this. It's bright green. It's ridiculous. Don't do it. Just assume everyone's drunk. Yeah. But moving on to more good news, it looks like DirecTV is dropping conservative outlet One American News, a.k.a. OAN. And in doing so, they might actually kill the channel for good because DirecTV and AT&T, uh, they played an integral role in its very existence and made up a reported 90% of its revenue. Yeah, I remember when that came out. It's like, wait, what, where did OAN come from? Why does this exist? And it's like, ah, the cable companies wanted another conservative network because they, they noticed that a lot of people were watching Fox. So they're like, let's make another one. <laughs> yeah. So what could go wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the Washington Post with more. DirecTV announced Friday evening that it will sever ties with One American News later this year, pulling the conservative news channel from millions of homes and dealing a significant blow to the pro-Trump network. The channel, which rose to prominence during the Trump administration and has promoted conspiracy theories about the 2020 presidential election and coronavirus pandemic, will be dropped from DirecTV in early April when its contract expires. 
uh, it continues, the move figures to be a big financial loss for the Fringe Network. An OAN accountant reported in 2020 that 90% of the channel's revenue in the previous year stemmed from subscriber fees paid by DirecTV and other AT&T owned platforms, according to Reuters. AT&T has been repeatedly criticized for playing a foundational role in building up OAN into a Trump-friendly alternative to Fox News. Though DirecTV is now its own company, AT&T owns 70% of the satellite provider. Without the estimated tens of millions of dollars in revenue from AT&T, an OAN accountant said in sworn testimony that the network's value would be zero, reported Jeez. Reuters. Now, this has obviously pissed off everyone at OAN, and they have turned to their viewers, while they still have them, for help in a smear campaign against DirecTV and AT&T. From the Daily Beast, check it out. After DirecTV dropped far-right channel One American News, one of the fact-free network's hosts urged his viewers to dig up dirt on the chairman of AT&T, the parent company of the satellite yeah, TV provider. It. Whatever it is, OAN host Dan Ball pleaded on Monday evening, listing hypothetical scandals like extramarital affairs or anti-white racism. <laughs> at, the, at the end of Monday night's broadcast of his show, Real America, and after saying earlier in the show that OAN is now at war with AT&T, Ball told viewers that he was going to remind them every single day until DirecTV pulls the plug in April that we need your help. Airing a graphic that featured AT&T's customer support number and a picture of AT&T chairman William Kennard, Ball noted that Kennard had connections to the Obamas and Clintons for decades. I mean, yeah. Yeah, uh, sure, uh, but like why this is also like the media, company that created yeah, the channel. Media executives generally do have a cozy relationship with uh, the executive branch. I, I agree that, that we should do something about that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, besides begging OAN viewers to blow up AT&T's phone lines, metaphorically, yeah. with demands that they keep his channel. Uh, Ball also called on them to send them any salacious information about the conglomerate's chairman. Quote, if you have any dirt on Mr. Kennard, I'd love to see it and put it on this program, the Real America host exclaimed. You bring me concrete evidence of whatever it may be, cheating on his taxes, cheating on his wife, saying racial slurs against white people. Ball <laughs> unsubtly referencing the fact that Kennard is black. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Whatever it may be, find it for me. Bring it, and we will air it. He wrapped his plea by saying, everybody's got dirty little sins and secrets they're hiding, and that Kennard deserves to have his exposed over AT&T deciding to cut ties with One American News. This is war. Everyone's got to come in the dirty. Mm. Uh, no, it's... it's uh, I can't wait. I can't wait because April... Fast approaching. They're just going to get more and more desperate. I mean, let them fight, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Like, I hate OAN, but I hate AT&T nearly as much. Yeah, what, but the thing is, is like, they're going to get inundated with, like, tips. That yeah. It's going to be like Jacob Wall and Jack Berkman yeah. all over again. I saw Mr. Kennard in the closet. Kissing my teacher. Kissing my teacher. Yeah. And then a baby came out. And the baby waved and the baby at me. looked at me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, it'll still be fun to watch as this company treads water and then uh -huh. starts gasping for air yeah the desperation will be delicious um but we could get some uh, pretty amazing clips in the meantime until they do finally get banned uh anyways if for some reason you you missed it for some reason uh we did have a new episode of weekly weird news this week yeah uh, i got banished from the uh subscription feed and search uh i now actually believe i was skeptical before but i now fully believe that the uh the monetization algorithm and the content algorithm are completely independent entities yeah. because this one passed through the whole process of like putting in the tags and information fine they're like yeah it looks good we're going to put we as love many, the video we're going to just cover this thing with ads and yeah. then uh doesn't show up in sub feeds uh you get, doesn't even show up like when you search the title it's not on people's suggested videos you have page. to literally go into sidebar. our channel and then click videos yeah you got to go click on our channel click on uploads. it's a very laborious uh, process but it does exist and gonna, it's also confusing because it's two weekly weirds in a row with nothing in between, and both are about piss. Yes. So that that, that could Maybe, be another reason you might I think changing it. like the text color would have been a little bit. Well, they're both. It's got to be yellow for piss. I get it. If it's green, something's wrong. You got to go to the doctor. Anyways, we're gonna make it very easy for you. Yeah. If you want to go through the whole process of going internet today, click videos, do that, or you can click right here. HTTP <laughs> colon slash slash. It's up on. It'll be up on the screen if it's not right now, but it'll be there. Click it. Uh, if you did watch it, watch it again. If you haven't watched it, watch it ten times. Yeah, please. Because the it got views completely just, hammered. Dog shit. Yeah, dog real shit. bad. And uh, that's only going to do uh, even further harm to the uh, already skewed algorithm, which I went over last time. But like, mm. taking a, a break at all, bad for the channel. 
having to take uh, another break because uh, you have to go away for a family emergency. Yeah, it's going to be a tough, tough, tough climb out of this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, please <laughs> watch that. Hopefully this one pops up. It's Microsoft buying Activision. Why wouldn't it? Anyways, now it's on the screen. Thanks, Susan. Watch the video. We'll see you soon for tech news. Until then, bye. Bye-bye.